Hi guys, it's James here from Model Train Videos and today I thought I'd do just a quick um, unboxing video of the new Hornby 42XX. Now this is completely by accident because I went to my local model shop yesterday to buy some uh, bits for my cupboard or for my uh, store cupboard should I say and I ended up not buying the bits that I wanted and coming out with a Hornby 42X. The reason for that is they are going to be in short demand. Um, apparently there aren't very many left due to Hornby um, running into production difficulties because um, things are just getting too expensive to be produced in China nowadays. So I'm not going to do a, a, a history uh, lesson on the 42X. We're going to unbox it, have a look at it. I have already um, giving it a test run. I put a Hornby Sapphire DCC chip in there um, and it's a beautiful little runner. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's open the box. Now as you can see like Hornby it's a beautiful picture on the box, a beautiful little box um, and they have finally caught up with Backman producing the Ice Cube box and there it is all in there and basically, you just got to oh, grab one corner. Not quite as easy as the Backman box. And pull it out. And of course, you get your usual instruction leaflet there. Tells you where to do. Fairly straightforward. All your oiling points. Um, where you how to take the chassis or the body off for your DCC fitting of your DCC chip, how to put your brake gear on and relative bits and pieces and whatever. So that's fairly standardized. It's a beautiful little package. So then you have to slide it out. There you get a little bag of goodies. You've got your brake rodding. You've got a coupling there for the front. Um, a pair of steps and some brake pipes for front and rear. Very disappointed you haven't included a driver Hornby. Um, a nice little driver or a nice little set of uh, irons or shovels to go on there would be nice. But never mind, we can't ask for everything. Or well, we can't get everything. Oh, the bag's open, somebody's already opened that. So, let's open it, and there we go, there is the 42X. First impressions are, it's a very, very, very nice model. Um, if anybody have, have, has read the Model Rail reviews in the Model Rail magazine, um, I totally agree with them in there and whatever they've said. Hornby could have added a few more detailed bits, a little bit more of separate detail to the chassis, to the body, I must admit. Um, sliding windows wouldn't go amiss. Um, it has got separately uh, applied handrails, I must admit. But everything is, seems to be all moulded. The rivet lines are nice. It would look nice to be a weathered version. I must admit I am a big fan of weathered. Um, so maybe when my weathering skills have, uh, have improved a little bit more. The old weathering powders or airbrush may have to come out on this model I'm afraid. Um... Everything seems to be correct. The only criticisms I do have are we're so used to spring buffers, there are no sprung buffers either end. Um, when I turned the model upside down in my cradle to fit the DC chip last night, the dome came out. Um, that's poor quality Hornby. I must admit also that when I got it out of the box yesterday, um, this valve gear had slidden out of the valve guides and I had to gently prise it back in um, with a screwdriver. 
that's another poor quality control by you, Hornby. I know things are difficult for you guys that uh, build these or produce these superb models, but to be honest, Hornby, I was converted to you from being a big Batman fan um, because your models had overtaken Batman in the detail stakes and unfortunately your quality control has let you down a bit on this one. I saw a preview at this of this engine at the Great Dorset Steam Fair. Um, Hornby were represented there in a tent. Um, I think it was by Matplet Publications and uh, even there this dome was in the glass cabinet all on its own. So I thought then that was just pre-production teething problems but obviously not Hornby so come on apart from that I did think when I first saw it that the colour may have been slightly off but I'm getting slightly used to it I haven't put it up against say my 43X or my little pannier tanks that uh, are from Batman um, I did think the colour was slightly off I did think that the shirt button emblem was a tad small to be honest um, I would have liked the uh, collet version of this but unfortunately the shop only had two it only had a BR one uh, in black collet and this one and I didn't like the BR unfortunately I'm a bit of a great western fan so this is the Churchwood fat, uh, version the Churchwood version being that the steam pipes were inside the smoke box or inside the boiler but the collet, the smoke, uh, the steam pipes are outside. Um, but apart from that, those few niggly criticisms, yeah, it is a fantastic little model. Fantastic. And I've been waiting for absolutely yonks for one of these to come out. I first saw these 280s on the Peyton and Dartmouth Railway many 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 years ago and have been looking and waiting patiently for one of these and they finally came out so yesterday having heard the news that they were getting a bit like mocking horse poo to come by I do know Hattons can't even get them um, I thought I'd better grab it while I can now to fit a DCC chip um, yeah, no, no problems at all. Like I say, I fitted a sapphire chip in there, um, and all you do is get my pointer. You undo a screw there, and another one here, and the body, you just prise the body gently off, and you take the plug out. Um, and plug your other chip back in. Um, the sapphire slides nicely, uh, nicely inside the smoke box there and the end of the boiler, and it runs absolutely fantastic. It's probably the best DC chip locomotive and the easiest locomotive to drive out of my entire stock and I'm new to DCC so I'm learning to drive engines and setting the CV, CVs up to how I want them to perform and this I must say is a doddle and it must be down to the flywheel um, well done Hornby because that certainly does improve things hopefully on the end of this video you will see it running uh, for the first time on my exhibition layout Bickley or Buckley should I say it's called Buckley um, built around uh, Bickley Station near Cadley on the Exeter and Dartmouth Railway. Um, sadly, it's the only surviving station on that line. Um, and it is now, um, belongs to Devonshire Railway, or Museum, I think. Yeah, it's a nice place to visit. If you ever want to visit it, it's beautiful. Um, but yes, hopefully on the end of this video you will see it running on my exhibition layout and it is a beautiful little engine. Um, cost price, 
yeah, it is a little bit expensive. It cost me 120 quid, but that's about the going price. But unfortunately, us modelers have to, um, let's say, if we want these finely detailed models now, unfortunately, we'll have to lighten up and realize that we have to pay the extra cost for it. We can't have highly detailed models um, produced for such a cheap cost now, unfortunately. I think that's, you know, you have to recognize that. And if, you know, um, somewhere along the line, I suppose there's a compromise. You either want nice looking models and less detail for cheapness, or you want highly detailed models for the cost. It's up to you. Um, but I don't mind paying the extra cost, to be perfectly honest. It just represents how much work and how much time and effort um, goes into one of these. And you've only got to sort of like take one apart and repair one or modify one that you realise how much work the little Chinese people do, to be perfectly honest. But anyway, that's the end of my quick review. Um, to be perfectly honest, there's nothing else really to note apart from it. Is a beautiful little engine. I'm very pleased with it. Um, haulage wise, I haven't got really, my layout isn't really suitable to test how many wagons it should pull, but no doubt I will find a layout to try. But yeah, it's a beautiful little engine. All I've got to do now is uh, stick the steam pipes on, add the steps, and job done, and hopefully some weathering in the future. So, yeah, so hopefully, let's see it run on my layout, Buckley, and see what you think. Thanks for watching. See you later, guys. My name's James Thick. Bye-bye.